Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here today. I uh, would like to be able to uh, introduce myself. My name is Mike McGuire. Honored to be able to represent Sonoma County in the State Senate. We have representatives uh, from Congressman Thompson's office here, Congressman Huffman's office as well, Senator Dodd, Assemblymember Wood, uh, along with Assemblymembers Aguiar Curry, along with Assemblymember Levine, and I want to say thank you uh, to our state and federal legislative delegation for all their incredible work over these past uh, many days. And we're also grateful to all of you for being here today. Uh, what we'd like to be able to do is outline the debris removal process uh, as we move forward now and over the next 10 days. Uh, since, since the beginning of this unprecedented firestorm, local, state, and federal governments have been unified on the fire fight. Uh, the North Bay firestorm will go down as the most destructive and deadly fire disaster in California history. We've lost 42 of our neighbors, and we have over a dozen still missing. And I think I could speak for everyone in this building here today. Words cannot express how sorry we are for your losses. We also want to express our gratitude to the firefighters, law enforcement, National Guard, nurses, and doctors who came forward in our community's greatest time of need from across the world, literally, to be able to serve our community. In addition to the firefight for the past week, there has been a parallel effort. That parallel effort advance was focused on preparing for the largest cleanup and debris removal process in Golden State history. And even with the firefighters still on the front lines, we were focused on making sure there's a unified command, cleaning up our community, and getting our neighborhoods rebuilt. The size and scope of this debris removal effort will be one for the record books. But what I can assure you, for the first time in our state's history, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Army Corps of Engineers, FEMA, the Office of Emergency Services, the County of Sonoma, and the City of Santa Rosa have come together in a unified front to begin the process of cleanup, recovery, and where we're focused, getting our neighborhoods rebuilt. We are resilient, and we are Sonoma County strong, and we're going to come back stronger than ever. So without further... I will share with you, we are going to have some tough days ahead. We are going to get through this. We're going to get through this by working together. And we have all the subject matter experts from across the nation who are here today to be able to talk about what you can expect uh, in the weeks to come. I'd like to be able to turn it over to the head of the California Office of Emergency Services for Northern California. His name is Eric Lamoureux. He's going to be giving us an overview. We're then going to be turning it over to Sonoma County Director of Public Health. Eric, the podium is yours. Thank you, Senator. And first to the public that's assembled, uh, we will be staying after the press conference. Uh, I will be here with our partners from the US EPA and the Army Corps to answer any questions you may have specific to debris. Is that better? Is that better? All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for being here today. Um, as the Senator said, this is a monumental undertaking that's in front of us. It's a historic cleanup that has to occur not only here in Sonoma County, but across Northern California. Early on, the city and county came to us and asked for more help. They were going to need more resources in order to get this done. And Governor Brown reached out to the federal government to seek their help. And we have with us today our partners from the U.S. EPA's Region 9 office and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers who are going to be running two different projects here in Sonoma County over the next several weeks and months. You know, our job has been to mobilize those resources, and now the process begins this week of uh, that unification with the city and county to be very coordinated, very fast, very efficient in addressing all of the home sites that we've lost. There's going to be two phases to this effort. The first is going to be the removal of household hazardous waste, toxic materials on the home sites. This is batteries, this is Freon, this is other chemicals that have either were in place or have been generated as a result of these fires. And so the US EPA is going to be moving into our communities this weekend, 
this week, excuse me, to begin removing those materials. And that work is going to be coordinated with you, um, uh, uh, but it's going to be done under the, 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 we've got a public health emergency here in Sonoma County, and Governor Brown on Saturday directed that we go into each and every home site and remove those toxic materials. So regardless of whether you'll be moving forward with us in a full cleanup, US EPA is going to be moving throughout the community to eliminate those toxic materials and get those out as quickly as possible. That'll be phase one, and that'll be, again, th that work will be beginning this week because we need to eliminate that threat. Secondly is the full cleanup, and this is what I know there's been a lot of talk in the community about the full cleanup. The US Army Corps of Engineers and their contractors similarly are mobilizing in the community, and as soon as EPA finishes their sweeps of toxic materials, Army Corps of Engineer contractors will be right in behind them on those properties where you've given us permission to eliminate all of the ash, all of the debris that's in your property. So at the end of the day, we can return to you a safe and environmentally clean site for your family to rebuild. And our goal that we're pushing hard on in terms of mobilizing crews is to have that work completed by early 2018. So come springtime, you can begin the process of rebuilding and recovering. The most important part of us moving forward on that full cleanup is the right of entry forms. The county needs to receive permission from each and every one of you that have tragically lost a home so that we can begin the work of cleaning your home site. And let me just dispel a couple misconceptions that I know are out there on the right of entry form. First and foremost, we are not going to charge you for this cleanup. If you have insurance, that has a clause for debris, we'll be looking to collect that. If your insurance for debris is part of a larger category, we're gonna let you rebuild, and if there's any proceeds left over, we'll look to collect those for debris. We understand at the end of the day, we're not gonna be able to recover our costs. That's why the governor and the president have authorized state and federal assistance to cover the cost of this cleanup. That cost is not gonna be borne by you and it's not gonna affect your ability to rebuild your home and begin that critical recovery. So again, mobilization is key this week. Our partners from the US EPA are mobilizing, they're setting up their staging, they're doing site assessments, and they're gonna begin cleanups this week. Partners from Army Corps of Engineers are similarly moving at an incredible pace to mobilize resources, hire local contractors, and get the ball rolling. So this, at the end of the day, will be just as strategic and unified as the firefight was. So again, thank you, and I will now turn it over to Dr. Karen Millman. Good afternoon. Can, can everyone hear me? Okay. Speak loud. Okay. Speak loud. okay. Shout it out. All right. Is that better? That's loud. Okay. So I'm going to hopefully be loud enough that all of you can hear me. Um, as uh, the health professional coming in here, I do want to pause and acknowledge what a difficult situation this is for many of you in this room and all of us. Um, my heart goes out to all of you who have lost loved ones and homes. And I really hope that as we go through this, we can all take a moment to recognize the suffering around us and that it can create anger and frustration and sadness. And so please try to be compassionate with each other and try to be compassionate with everyone who is trying very hard to work to help with this. So um, as mentioned, um, there's a lot of concern that is going on regarding the um, public health and environmental health impacts of these fires. Unlike a fire that occurs when you burn the wood in your home, in your fireplace, the ash from burned homes uh, contains many other items, contains metals and chemicals and potentially asbestos. Um, think of all the things in the building materials in your house, in the pipes, in the wiring. And so this causes some concerns and we need to make sure that we have a very systematic way to address this. So last week, the Director of Environmental Health and I declared a public health emergency and it was ratified by the County Board of Supervisors. And what this does is it allows us to call on for additional resources from the federal government and the state government and also allows us to set up a systematic way to try to address the hazards in the community. I know that the processes we're putting in place may be a little frustrating and that everyone wants to move towards recovery as quickly as possible. But in this unprecedented 
unprecedented disaster, we only get one chance to do the cleanup right. And so we want to make sure we're taking a step back and that we're making sure that we're going as fast as we can, but also addressing the hazards for our family, friends, and the future residents of Sonoma County. So to that end, we're specifically focusing initially on the cleanup of the hazardous materials. And um, those, when I speak of those, I mean things like the propane materials and the paints and the pesticides. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about this initial first phase of the assessment. And the, that that is really necessary to do consistently throughout the community so that we can ensure that all of the cleanup in every property is safe. The second phase of the cleanup, as you'll hear later, um, is not is um, will be providing guidance and regulations so that individuals who wish to do the cleanup on their own have the standards that the health department and the other federal officials are recommending get cleaned up to, um, so that everyone has an even standing and all of the material, all, all of the properties get cleaned up to the same level in the community, even for those individuals who wish to do this on their own and separately. So um, again, we, we, the Environmental Health Department and we're working very closely with other health agencies to declare um, what are the uh, guide, guidelines that need and we're going to be issuing some additional regulations and guidelines in the future which will be very clear about how, how to go ahead and process things. What we're asking right now is that I know people are very anxious to move forward. We're not stopping anyone from going onto your properties to remove your personal property or go look for your heirlooms, but we're asking that no one do large scale debris removal until we've had a chance to make sure that the way the, proper, the debris is being removed is the best way to manage hazardous material. So for example, what we don't want to happen is for people to fill up a dump truck and have lots of hazardous material in it and it go down the highway and all the ash be spewing down the highway behind it. So those are the type of um, guidelines that we're going to be producing and um, sharing with you later on. So we'll have a chance for some questions for that and I'm going to turn this over to our federal on the scene coordinator from the EPA, Mr. Tan Delkelman. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Tom Dunkelman. I work for the EPA Emergency Response Program from San Francisco. Uh, EPA has been on the ground here in Sonoma since early last week, conducting a rapid needs assessment, just trying to get our arms around exactly what our task is gonna be here in the coming weeks. Uh, on Friday, FEMA issued a mission assignment to EPA, authorizing us to collect household hazardous waste in Sonoma County. And I wanna stress, As others before have said before me, have said before me that EPA is operating within a unified command structure, so we're coordinating, coordinating very closely with the city, the county, FEMA, and the Army Corps of Engineers to have uh, a very efficient and safe household, wa household hazardous waste collection event. Um, I want to speak to this event in a little more detail. Our event will occur, occur in two stages. The first is an assessment phase which will involve EPA and our contractors coming through the, the properties and identifying properties that have uh, remaining household hazardous waste. We will document and inventory that material. And so that effort will begin this Wednesday. We will have people on the ground starting Wednesday performing that task. Uh, following that, once we have identified the presence, the presence of household hazardous waste, our collection teams will follow shortly behind and we'll begin the process of actually physically removing the household hazardous waste. Um, you know, and that, that's really all I have to share with you today. And again, I'll be available afterwards for questions. And with that, I'll turn the microphone over to Christine Sosko, who is the Sonoma County Environmental Health Director. So thank you. Um, I'm Christine Sosko. I'm the director of Environmental Health. Speak up louder. Closer. Sorry. No. Closer. <laughs> Drop it down. Um, I'm the director of Environmental Health, and I also want to acknowledge um, your loss and express express my deepest sympathy. I'm from, um, like I said, the Department of Environmental Health, and we're part of a team that the county and the city of Santa Rosa are assembling to assist you through the debris removal process. 
We're working diligently together to make this process as smooth as possible. Um, I'm here to talk to you about the right of entry process. The Department of Environmental Health will be operating the right of entry processing center. This will be located at 625 Fifth Street in Santa Rosa. It'll be open and fully operational on Wednesday, um, October 25th, and it'll be operating from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. We are aware that there was some um, other information that was out, so we have had some people show up with applications, and if you do show up with an application before then, we will be receiving those applications. Um, but we're working diligently to get the center fully staffed and also make sure that we have all those resources available for you um, on Wednesday. Um, when you do come to the right of entry center, we ask that you bring three things with you. One is the right of entry form. And with that form, if you do not have that form, you can get the form at the center and there will be someone to help you fill that out. Um, but if you have that form, you can go ahead and bring that in with you. The other piece is your identification. And you want to bring a form of identification for you and any others that may be on your title. So for instance, if it's you and your spouse that are on your title, you both need to bring that um, form of identification and you need to um, sign the form. Um, if if your property was in a trust or an LLC, we encourage you to talk to your um, uh, lawyer or somebody and find out exactly how to sign that form. Uh, for the most part, we do realize that there probably are properties that are in trust. And if you can bring the first page of your trust and then the page of your trust that ha talks about the signature authority, we can take the signature authority form and have that person sign as a trustee. Um, the third piece that we need also is the um, copy of your insurance. You heard earlier about the insurance reimbursement and that, and so having a copy of your insurance will help us expedite that process and make sure that um, it's all processed properly. So um, I just wanna give you some some information as far as where you can go, what are the right um, avenues, where are we located, what are the contact information, and that is our office that is at 625 Fifth Street in Santa Rosa. The, um, there is an email set up if you want to email your form in, and that would be um, ehroe at sonoma-county.org. With that, if you're emailing your forms in, know that we will have to be contacting you to complete that form process so that we can do the proof of ownership uh, through the identification. Um, and we'll be working to call people back. And then um, also there's a hotline if you have any information. That is area code 707-565-6700. Um, can you repeat it? Sorry, again, that's 565-6700. Um, we're also, there have been lots of questions about the opt-out process. We are currently working on a plan, and um, we are working on a plan that will assure that all those, anybody who opts out and goes through that process, that those properties are clean to the same level that uh, the Army Corps of Engineers is cleaning those that opt into the process. So with that, I'm gonna thank all of you, and I'm gonna turn it over to Joss Jimmerfield, who is with the Army Corps of Engineers. Thank you. Thank you, good afternoon. My name is Josh Jimmerfield, I'm with the Army Corps of Engineers. I'm a debris subject matter expert. Uh, I'd like to touch real quick on the overall process for what our debris removal will look like uh, and give you some, some hints on how that's going to go and, and what our plan will be. 
First off, right now, we're going to wait until the EPA has cleared all the HHW from the site. At that time, we'll be able to go in, assess the properties, and begin our testing process. We want to make sure that anything that we do is not putting any anybody else in the community in jeopardy health-wise. So we will have coordination with EPA and the air quality boards to make sure that all of our removal of ash and debris we're constantly monitoring the air around us uh, and the, the materials that we're pulling out and handling those appropriately. Initially, we will be pulling off the ash from the site, removing that and to testing that to make sure it's disposed of correctly in the proper landfills. Following that, we'll be removing foundations, stem walls, uh, brick and mortar type structures. The reason for the foundation removal we found in the past, fires this hot destroy the integrity of the foundations. There is a process, if you'd like to do this on your own, where we recommend highly that an engineer come in to assess those foundations for structural integrity. Once that's done, we'll begin testing the soil underneath those to make sure that that meets the standards of California for cleanliness so that your family can go back and begin rebuilding. If we need to, we'll remove soil and make sure that we leave the lot clean so that you have a, a place to rebuild uh, that's safe for your family and you can move forward with your lives. A couple of things I'd like to mention about our contractors. To the fullest extent possible, our contractors will be using local labor sources. They've already set up in the communities and are reaching out to local contractors. And we will be using, again, to the fullest extent possible, local sources so that the money that is being fed from the federal government is staying within the community and helps you get back on your feet. Uh, the contractor is one of the other pieces that we have put into their contract. They will be using a base camp, so the, the crews and the people that we bring in will not be taken away from those of you who don't have a place to stay, so the hotels uh, and other areas where you guys can stay in. We'll be using a base camp so that we do not put additional pressure on the communities for those contractors. I think the last thing I want to touch on again, just to be very clear, our goal here is to be moving as soon as possible. Ideally, right now, we're looking at this weekend for our contractors to start their, their process to begin ramping up. They're in the area. We're finalizing agreements with them now. And we are looking at this weekend to have trucks in the area. We'll begin checking them for safety, making sure that they're the right trucks for the, for the job and that they can be safely on the roads. Once that process starts, we'll begin a much bigger ramp up, and I'm sure there'll be uh, more questions to follow after that happens. I'd like to turn it over now to Mayor Chris Corsi and Chairwoman Shirley Zane. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Shirley Zane and I'm a Sonoma County Supervisor and Chair of the Board. As thousands of firefighters and emergency responders begin to re return to their homes, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that our community has grown and our hearts go with them and there will always be a part of our community. We are so incredibly grateful. Our attention now turns to rebuilding our beautiful county, our communities, and our lives together. Today is the first step in that process, and we want to thank everyone who is here today in assisting with that colossal effort. We know that many of you have questions about the debris removal process, and that's why we organized today's press conference to begin to address those questions. We wanted you to hear from officials from the many state and federal agencies who will be gathering with your city and county governments to make sure that you get the assistance that you need and that our community is protected from serious health and safety concerns. Please note that the opt-out standards have yet to be adopted by the Board of Supervisors. And if you choose to opt out, you will pay your, for yourself. I encourage you to be careful about the many people out there that are advertising that they will do it for you at $15 an hour. Please be careful. Now, most importantly, we want to let our residents know that your county and city governments are here for you in the days ahead. We are all working together and we're going to be prepared to tackle this recovery with each and every one of you. Together we are Sonoma Strong. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, first of all, I want to thank our state and federal partners for bringing the resources that we need to recover and rebuild this community. 
And I want you to know that locally, the city and the county are doing everything that we can to erase the lines that, uh, that separate these two jurisdictions. We know that this cleanup will be faster, it'll be more efficient, it will be better for everyone if the county and city work together. I'm encouraging all of you to join this partnership and opt into the cleanup process. This will be the, the best way that we can get everybody, everybody's property ready for rebuilding as soon as possible. Tomorrow, the City Council is going to take some specific actions to reduce and streamline regulations that will allow people to rebuild faster and more efficiently. In the meantime, we have a new website that will help us all through this process. SonomaCountyRecovers.org will contain information about recovery and rebuilding. It's the go-to place for information that we need right now. SonomaCountyRecovers.org. All right, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, in a moment, we'll get to some Q&A, but I want to amplify a few points that were made today. Uh, first off, it is critically important to us that each and every one of you that lost a home has the opportunity to get onto your property and look for those items that may have been left behind. You'll have that opportunity. If you haven't been able to re-enter yet, when you do, you'll have that opportunity. As the EPA crews are coming through, they will work with you to see if they can go on and remove toxic waste. But if you need more time, you'll have more time and they'll come back. So you will have that time. Rest assured, you will have that time. Secondly, we are fully committed, and I can't stress this enough, we're fully committed to moving rapidly and efficiently to remove this ash debris from your property and get your community back on its feet again. Leadership at the highest level, many of those officials who you've seen in your community already, have authorized us to mobilize hundreds of teams for both the EPA mission and the Army Corps of Engineers mission. And they are prepared to give us whatever else we need to achieve the goal of being done with this cleanup in early 2018. So rest assured, this is gonna be done rapidly, efficiently, and coordinated with you and your community leaders. Finally, I can't stress enough, and it's written clearly in the ROE, and I'm happy to point people to the sections in the ROE. There is no cost to you. We will look to collect your insurance proceeds if you have insurance. And if your insurance proceeds are part of a large clause, we will look to collect after you have rebuilt. Our objective here is not to make ourselves whole. Our objective is to ensure that as taxpayers are paying for this, we don't duplicate benefits. And that's the reason that we want to collect what we can from your insurance. But at the end of the day, as I said, the governor and the president have authorized state and federal funding to cover our collective costs. So that will not be borne by you or borne on the back of your ability to rebuild. Will that show on our title as a lien on our title put there by the city? We'll be happy to answer questions from the public after we have completed answering questions from the assembled media here. So as I said, I will stay behind with our partner, federal partners. So happy to take questions from our media. No, it will not. Will there be a lien on his property? No, there will not. Could you please announce what media organization you're with? Okay. All right, go ahead. So whether you live in the country or the city, doesn't matter. We're looking at the entire Sonoma County and our partners at EPA and the Army Corps, once they've fully mobilized their crews, once they understand which property owners want us to clean up those properties, they'll begin to develop work plans to prioritize their work. Can you repeat the question? Right, so the, the question is uh, the first phase of cleanup being done in the unincorporated versus out in the country versus the city, and, and EPA will be looking at that and they'll be 
working to get their crews everywhere. Okay. Our goal is that by springtime, people will be, the, the question was how early will people be able to begin rebuilding and our goal is for folks to be able to be rebuilding come spring. So you're saying this process will take how many months before people can start rebuilding? We expect, and our, Can you repeat the question yeah. The question is how long will the actual cleanup take place? It's gonna take place over the next several months with the goal of being done in early 2018. Well, certainly, if in that process of time we've completed, folks will be able to begin rebuilding. So certainly, as the crews are doing their work over the next several months, sites will be ready for rebuild. What the goal that I am out outlining is when we will be completed with all home sites. Question. My name is Don Howard. I live in 1927 San Marcos Rise in the San Miguel Estates, just to the south of, of Coffee Park. My question is, at what point was testing done on any footings to deem that these footings are no longer good? So the question is, at what time was testing done to deem that no footings are good and can be salvaged as part of our cleanup? Um, we're basing our assessment on the work that's been done across California countless times on similar cleanups like this. The majority of the time, the structural integrity of those foundations is not safe to rebuild. So if you choose to go with our program, we'll remove those. If you want to test your foundation because you believe it's still structurally uh, sound, you can certainly do that, and that's an option you've got, uh, but you'll need to move forward with the cleanup uh, yourself. Purple, shirt, straight ahead. purple shirt right here. So the, the question, if you opt into our program, you are authorizing us to conduct that cleanup. That full cleanup with the Army Corps of Engineers, you'll be notified in advance of when they will, you will. You will be notified in advance of when they will be there to clean up your property. Additionally, on the ROE, on the back page, you have the opportunity to lay out any issues and concerns you have with your particular property site so that you can work with the Army Corps and its contractors to articulate if there's something you want to ensure does not get damaged in that process, that'll be your opportunity. But you'll be notified, and it, and it spells out in the ROE, you'll be notified 48 hours in advance. We've got the core. Yeah. We're, we're gonna have the core answer the question quickly. I would say for our phase Corps of Engineers, before we start any removal, we will be notifying homeowners 24 to 72 hours in advance that we will be on their property and conducting our first initial assessments. So real quick, everybody, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two questions over here, and we're gonna go straight to the middle. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, hand up right there, sir. Please, if you don't mind shouting out. I represent a propane company, and we have customers who can't move back into their houses, and we're required to go in and do a check of the system. And we'd like to do that to get them back online. And the other thing is to do that. We have some customers who have unfortunately lost their house. The tank's still intact, it's full of fuel, and they have a credit due to them for that fuel. We'd like to get the process to get back to them. And then we also have some tanks So several questions there related to propane tanks, a representative from a propane company uh, wanting to know about uh, getting people back online uh, where they haven't been lost, uh, collecting tanks that have been destroyed, uh, collecting propane from tanks on properties that have been destroyed. Can the Army Corps first speak to, um, on the homes that have been destroyed, the collection of propane or the collection of the tanks? You know, I can talk to you. Go. Tell me, Pierre. Yeah. Introduce yourself again. So again, my name is Tom Dunkelman. I'm with EPA. Shout it out. You know, and I think we want to work very closely with the propane companies. Uh, and perhaps somebody can help us, you know, assemble a list of the various propane companies that operate in the county so that we can coordinate with you 
regarding either the return of your tanks on the burned properties or, um, you know, the tanks that are, that are obviously damaged, empty. We're just going to mark with an with a initial, probably just say empty, and leave that behind for you to pick up. But I think, I think the short answer is that we need to coordinate with all the propane companies in the county. If you don't mind, I'll catch you after the meeting. Question? Right here. Uh, actually, we had, uh, we had a question right here, and then we're going to go to three questions over here. And then I just want to let folks know we're going to be standing by afterwards, all of our the core OES, <coughs> FEMA, to be able to answer questions as well. Right over here, sir. So I represent Clark High School. The question is, Louder. I represent I'll, I'll repeat High School. it. So the question is. <coughs> So uh, the question was about schools and the EPA sweeps. Um, the commercial properties that have been completely destroyed will be uh, reviewed by EPA and any toxic materials removed. We'll have to get back to you on the, on the partial destroyed, but on com com uh, complete loss for commercial properties, we will be doing the sweeps. We're going to go right here to the woman who's sitting, and then we're going to go to the gentleman in the black. No, the, sir. The woman first. So, first year question on uh, uh, watershed protection. I'll let the Army Corps speak to that. So for watershed protection, especially things going into storm drains, I know that's a huge concern. That's one of our mitigation processes from the outset. We will be making sure that we have the appropriate measures so that there's no runoff as we wet down material. None of that will be going into the storm drains, and that's it. within our contract. We'll have quality assurance officers on site to review and make sure that the, those protocols are being followed correctly by the contractor. On sites afterwards, if we need to mitigate those for storm runoff, We'll be evaluating those on an as-needed basis, and we have uh, are looking at a, a cadre of people, H&H uh, &H folks, to evaluate those sites, and we'll work with FEMA to make sure that that's done appropriately. On your question about trees on the property, as part of the operation, if there's trees that are impeding the, the footprint of where the home was lost, then the crews will be addressing those, either removing limbs or removing trees if they're in the way or if they're leaning in. As, as far as uh, watershed issues and larger tree issues, uh, the county's mobilizing contractors to address watershed issues. And we actually have a task force that's been formed that CAL FIRE is leading that's going to look at overall watershed issues. So I don't have a specific answer on whether we're going to have a program to deal with other trees, um, but, but that the overall watershed impacts is something that's being looked at. So folks, gentleman we're going to go to the gentleman in the black shirt, woman with the scarf, and the gentleman in the green right over here next. Sir. Yes. So the question is about the infrastructure of the uh, uh, water system and drainage system within Coffee Park. I don't think we have anybody here from the county that's that's prepared to address that, but that that would be something that the county would look at in their in their overall uh, planning relative to the rebuild. So the Army Corps uh, will, will have measures in place to mitigate impacts on the environment during the cleanup and after the cleanup's concluded. Who was the we're gonna, next uh, So we're going to go to uh, the gentlewoman in the way. We're going to go, sir, sir. I'm going to hang on one sec. Sir, we're going to go, and we're going to go to the woman in the scarf. We're going to go to the gentleman in the green shirt, and then we're going to come straight to you, sir. I promise you, sir, we're going to come straight to you. Sir? Can I, so... We have folks who have been had, so I promise you. Good question. Let him have it. Wait a minute. 
question. I have the same question. Please answer. Perfect. Sir, I appreciate the, the, the question. The question, the question is about foundations and it's about the specific issues in Coffee Park about peers. Right now, our process is going to be to remove the foundation. If you don't want that to We are not going to be charging you to remove a foundation. To replace it. The question is to replace it. And, and that, sir, the replacement is the, is the choice that you have to decide. There's your answer. Okay? You have to decide because we will remove the foundation, so it's going to be part, it's going to be part of the replacement. But your only fault is to rip out the foundation. Exactly. You have to make a choice if you want to go with our program based upon our experience. The safety of your foundation is not safe to rebuild. If you disagree with that, you have the option of going forward on your own to do your cleanup. Let, let's get to the woman in the... I'll be happy to stay behind, sir, and, and answer your question and everybody else here in the room. Let's go to the, the woman with the scarf. So the first question is about your liability, if I'm interpreting it correctly, with our contractors on your property. So built into the contracts between the state and the Army Corps of Engineers, and the con they accept liability for any injuries or damage that they cause to their equipment or personnel during the course of the operation. You are not liable for any injuries or damage to their equipment that occurs. And I'll, I'll get to the I'll get to the follow up question. Yes, I have. You are not you are not liable for damage that the contractors incur to their own equipment or personnel. The contract language is in place between the state and the entities that will be doing the contracting. And that contract language, which you don't see in here, that contract language is very clear that they assume responsibility and liability for their injuries. They've got to provide workers' comp. They've got to cover the costs of their damage. Okay. So again, if the uh, uh, homeowner decides to sell uh, the debris proceeds, we still have to collect those debris proceeds um, as part of this project. If there's debris coverage as part of a larger category, then we will work with the homeowner in terms of identifying what we can collect from that. 
Okay, in the back. Yes, sir. Sir, one moment. Let me let someone else have the opportunity. So sir, can, we will look at your... Yeah. Can I, can I get in here? Yeah, go ahead. So quickly, I wanted to say thank you for your patience. Let me just talk about process, if it's okay with folks. We have a gentleman here who's had his arm up. What we'd like to be able to do is, I promise, later this week, because not everyone is here who has lost a home, we will bring forward another town hall to be able to spend time going through every detail, whether it's the issue of foundations, great point, sir, what's your last name? That, that Mr. Stevens brought forward in regards to foundations, in regards to liability. Thank you so much, ma'am, and she, she just here is gonna ask her last name. I promise you, we're gonna have another in-depth town hall where we'll have individuals, and the mayor has suggested this and the chairwoman, at individual stations, so you can all ask the content experts on whether it's the issue of foundations or liability or timeline. We'll get that scheduled for later this week. But what I'd like to be able to, what I'd like to, be able to propose is just, if we can, and I know folks are frustrated, if we can go one by one in questions, we're gonna spend another about 15, 20 minutes on questions, then we're gonna hang here and answer more questions afterwards. But if it's, uh, we, this gentleman has had his hand up for a long time right over here. Please, go right ahead. So the question was, if uh, you don't have a debris clause and we're looking, then that's all we're going to look to collect. No. So let me, let me be clear again. Can you repeat the question? It, the question is the belief that we're going to go after your full insurance, okay? We, if there is a debris clause in your insurance, that is the only thing that we will be looking to collect. And it says that in the second paragraph of item two in the right of entry form. It, let me, let me, if you have a debris clause, that is the only part of your insurance we are going to look to collect. So, you're talking about your debris clause that says if it's not enough, you're going to go into the rest of it. That's if you're doing it yourself and your insurance company. That's not for us. That is not for us. We are going to look to collect your debris, the component in your debris clause. The only time we would be looking at any of the rest of your insurance is if you do not have a debris clause and after you have rebuilt, if there are any proceeds left, then we would be looking to collect those. We're going to get the opt out for Is that going? So, Eric, we're going to. Uh, right, right here, sir. On the flat sheet. Uh, two questions. One, do we know who the general contractors are going to be? And two, you said uh, local. Do we have a list of local contractors that are going to be used? So, the uh, the contractor, uh, actually, the Army Corps. Eric, can you come back here yes. so that the media can get you? So, the question was the contractor that will be utilized and local contractors. So right now our, our prime for this area is Ashbridge, and they will be hiring local contractors. They have not finalized all those yet. I will check and see if we can get a list of those local contractors out uh, through the, the county contacts once that list has been finalized. We anticipate that happening within the next probably five to six days. They'll have their initial list out, but Ashbridge will be the, the prime contractor on this. Part of the reason that we do this is we hire contractors that have the capability uh, in management. They are not bringing any of their subs from Florida to do this work. They're hiring all local to the full ex extent possible to do this work. You have one of the largest contractors right over there, Mike Gulati. I'm curious if you can contact him yet. 
All local. So your question is, uh, Mr. Gelati, who I assume is a, a local contractor, all local contractors will have opportunities. To, there's going to be more than enough work to go around. And we have made it very clear to the federal government, we need to hire local and we need to hire prevailing wage. Those are top priorities as subcontractors are brought on board. The, sir, right? The gentleman, gentleman of the white has an Right here. Eric, uh, first of all, your comment that y'all are only going to go after the excess debris removal coverage, I, I commend you. I commend you for saying that up front. The problem is, I read the right of entry permit, I downloaded it last night, I looked at it again this morning. That's not what the language says. I'm an expert in the area of insurance, and every single property, every single property policy pays for debris removal from the main coverage first, is how they word it. Are y'all willing to make some changes? and tweak that right of entry permit so that it reflects in legal language what you're now stating. I'm happy. So the question is disagreement about how we're going to collect. I will point you to paragraph two of item number two in the ROE. It specifically calls out we will work to collect from the debris clause. Look, this is not you contracting to do your cleanup. This is us coming into contract and attempting to collect to the extent we can what we can from your insurance. We are not looking to make ourselves whole here. The federal government and state government have authorized funding to cover our costs. So if you have a debris clause, we'll look to collect that. If you do not, and it is clearly spelled out in paragraph two of section two, if it is part of a larger insurance category after you have rebuilt, if there are any proceeds left, we will be looking to collect from there. I, I have read it. Not what it says. I would appreciate that y'all would consider it. I was very involved in the Valley Fire. A number of people over there lost some of their money. In other cases, people didn't collect everything that they were supposed to. So I, 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 I want you guys to find it. That's all I'm, I'm going to go Thank right you. over here, right into the white. Uh, white. The Hi white. there. Last year, over 350,000 homes burned down in the United States. Absent a finding of asbestos or lead paint, they were not declared hazardous waste sites. Why is it that my home is declared a hazardous waste site? How do you justify that? Requiring owners' protocols and thousands of dollars more in cleanup for something that if it had burned down last year would not have had this. So the question is, the question is, why has this been declared an environmental hazard when other uh, losses of homes in other parts of the country have not? I'll let our local uh, public health officials speak to that. The, the magnitude of the fire that has occurred here, sorry, I'm, bear with me, apologies. The magnitude of the fire that has gone here has not, does not enable us to, at this time, do individual home assessments. So what we are doing is looking at what is known from all of the experiences of prior fires of this size in other locations, which have clearly indicated that there are toxic chemicals that are available. Um, that are la la ending up on the properties. And so at this point in time, that is why we're doing this initial hazardous cleanup, working with the EPA and working through the processes. A follow-up to that. The Code of Federal Regulations specifically says hazardous, chemical waste are So uh, the question is um, about the legal um, documentation and requirements and statements here. What has been declared is not individual home sites. Again, we have declared a public health emergency for the entire county based on the magnitude of the toxic material and the burns that have occurred. And we are working through a process to address the countywide issues, which does include having this whole process that you're hearing detailed here with you to make sure that we are addressing the safety of not only your property, but of the other individuals who are around it. All right, I got the gentleman in the vest. We have the gentleman in the plaid and the gentleman with his hat up. So gentleman in the vest.
Uh, it is not our intent. Can you repeat the question? The, the question is recommending that we do, in fact, uh, put, and sir, correct me if I'm paraphrasing this wrong, but that we do, in fact, uh, put that uh, responsibility, potential liability, back on the homeowners as part of this. Yeah, so the question is about adding the homeowner as a second insured on the contractor's policy. Um, I don't have an answer for you on that, but we can certainly follow up on that. Our, let me just be clear. Our intent is not to charge you and not to sue you, and we will stick by that. We're going to go to the gentleman in the plaid right here and the gentleman with the hat on. So the question is about how we can put the burden on a homeowner to identify where sewer lines are when they may not be aware of it, where it is. Um, and uh, our contractors will be working with local government to identify where all those key hazards are, especially in uh, the, the more urban areas like Coffee Park. I think what that speaks to more, sir, is especially out in the unincorporated and, the, and, and areas in the country where you've got septic, where you've got leach lines, to the extent you can identify that ahead of time for us, it'll help the contractors be more, uh, be more efficient in their operation. If there's any information you can share with us about your property that, that you likely know better than anybody else, we want to hear that. But we'll be, as I said, this is going to be a unified effort. The city and the county are going to be working with the contractors to identify those types of issues. I think what we'll do is take two more questions with the... Gentleman in the hat, and then we have another gentleman who, uh, with the sunglasses on his hat, and I apologize, I'm not trying to be disrespectful by identifying you like that. Let's go to the gentleman in, uh, with this hat. I'll repeat the question. So my question is about timing, and it's come up a couple times about people wanting to do their own assessment of foundations or wait for their adjusters who are very slow in getting back to us about whether or not they're, they're going to require, require us or want us to keep the foundation. How long are you going to give us to sign the right of entry so we can do those things before we commit to you doing the work? So the question is, when is the deadline going to be to sign the right of entries? Um, that's something that we're still discussing internally with the, with the city and county. And as soon as we've identified when that'll be, we'll communicate that out. So we don't have a deadline at this point. Yes. Absolutely. Can a gentleman with the sunglasses on his hat, uh, sir? There won't be an opt-out form. The only form is opting into the program. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry. There will be an opt-out form, and we, we are work. Sorry. Um, there will be, we will set up an opt-out program, and we will outline the plan. We're working on that right now with the city and um, all the other agencies to set up those standards. As soon as we have that available, we will get that information out to you and share that with you, and the, we'll also share the process. We're working, um, we're working diligently on it. I can't give you a 
solid time, but I can tell you we're working as quickly as possible and hope to have it out very soon. We, we have another question with the young lady in the blue, please. Right. So two questions. One, uh, what assurances can be made to residents that are returning to homes that weren't lost regarding their safety? And the second is about the transport of debris um, through the community. So maybe if public health can, can speak to the first question, and then I'll let Army Corps speak to how the material will be transported. So we have posted some guidance on the Sonoma County website regarding um, ways to clean up your house if you've re-entered it. Um, with guidance with that, with in regards to individual houses, the other recommendation that I might have is that many insurance companies will offer to come and do assessments for you um, and um, that, that they can also provide some additional reassurance for you. So, you can stay yeah. so two things. One, um, we're, uh, my understanding is the county is not going to be making recommendations on standards. They are going to be identifying a standard that must be followed for individuals who want to do it themselves. And those standards are going to be consistent with the standards that the Army Corps will be using. So let me let the Army Corps kind of speak to the transport of materials and how that's handled to protect the integrity of the community. So right now our standards will be to work with the Air Quality Board and ensure that any material that needs to be what we call burrito wrapped, so fully encased within a truck, that that's done properly and the contractor understands that. That's written into the language so that it, as we go down the road, we're not blowing ash and, and toxic materials out of those vehicles. So when we get on site, that'll be initial testing. As we go throughout the mission, we will continue to test, not just at the site, but within those communities and those areas where we're moving. So we're getting a holistic look at what the toxicity is and ensuring that we're, we're meeting the standards that California sets for safety for the particulate matter uh, and the toxins that are, that are a result of our debris collection. So we're going to take three more questions and here's what we're going to do. I just would like to suggest we're going to have Army Corps, Office of Emergency Services and EPA on the other side of this staircase. We're going to have a uh, young lady here in blue, you have a young lady in blue and the gentleman right here in white. So then what we're going to do, so then, so then what we're going to do, and I,
Well, we're going to talk about the, I promise you, before we adjourn here, we'll talk about the abatement process. Uh, the question was if, uh, and I'm going to use the technical term, if my neighbor has a whole bunch of crap that they're refusing to clean up, am I right? Yes. Uh, and I clean up my property, what are you going to do to make sure that they clean up theirs? We're going to talk about the abatement process here shortly. We're going to get to it, but I want to go to the question right here and we'll answer it as uh, Eric answers this next question. Three more questions and we want to meet you over there. Army Corps, OES, FEMA, EPA are going to be hanging here to answer additional questions. Ma'am. Will the county allow auto insurers to extract the burned out vehicles and if so, when? So if the burned out vehicle is on your ash, on the ash footprint of the home or in your driveway, it'll be collected as part of the Army Corps project. If it's out on the street, then you can work with your insurer to get, to get it removed. And uh, people are uh, concerned about their FEMA assistance because it says unauthorized debris and ash removal by property owners may jeopardize their ability to attain financial assistance. So what you're telling me is auto insurers can remove vehicles on the street, but they cannot remove vehicles in driveways. So we're certainly going to work with every survivor who's affected who have applied for FEMA assistance to ensure that they... Can you repeat the <clears throat> question as well? First, my name is Robert Pezzapain. I'm the FEMA Division Supervisor for Sonoma County. Everybody who's registered for FEMA assistance, we're going to work closely with each survivor and applicant to ensure that they're getting everything they're entitled to. So in terms of the duplication of benefits, in terms of what we're providing assistance for and what insurance is providing assistance for in the debris removal, we will have a coordinated effort to ensure that the survivor is not uh, unduly taxed or uh, in the insurance process for that. So we're going to work closely to make sure that each survivor gets everything they're entitled to. Okay. What we want to know, though, is if we can move the cars, basically. Can we move the cars? Can we still use FEMA the, and the, remove our cars from the driveway? That's the question. The question is, can we remove the cars? If you're going to go with our project, we would ask that you not remove the car. Okay. And, and then the, I'll just... Well, well, one more thing, I would also just encourage everybody to take photos of everything. So as we do have FEMA inspectors uh, looking at uh, uh, home sites and automobiles, please just go ahead and take pictures of everything. And again, we're going to work with each survivor and each applicant to make sure they're getting everything they're entitled to. So uh, if you have any questions or concerns, I would just take the picture and uh, work with the government officials to clear your debris. We're going to answer the question about abatement. We're then going to go to uh, young lady in steel blue, and then we're going to go to the gentleman in gray. So to your question, the individual who just refuses to clean or the individual that decides to clean on their own, the county will have an, ab an abatement process for that individual that's refusing to clean. They're also going to be adopting a standard. If you're cleaning it yourself, they have to comply with that standard. A timeline for... I can't speak to whether there'll be a timeline for their cleanup. I can say that for those individuals that are deciding to, to, to not take advantage of our program, we're likely going to be from the, from the uh, Army Corps side, they're going to be looking at hiring contractors. Those individuals who do it themselves are probably going to be looking at a lot of those same contractors. So we believe that for the safety of the community and the ability to maximize all the resources that are here in this community, um, participating in our program is going to allow us to get Sonoma County back much quicker. I'm going to go to the, the young lady in the steel blue, please. So 
that's a question I'm going to need to follow up on. I don't have a I don't have a good answer for you right now, but it's something certainly that I'd like to talk to you offline so that I can clearly articulate up what your particular concern is. I'm not sure at the end of the day we're going to have the answer that that that's going to meet your satisfaction. And again, that's going to have to get back to uh, part of your decision making process on whether you want to utilize our program or not. A gentleman right here, right here. Uh, again, on the right of entry form, a question and a comment. The question is, just to be clear, with the Corps of Engineers, are you going to track actual costs on individual properties to be built, be built against individual policy limits? I'd hate to use up that whole limit to scrape some ash off. We are going to track our costs. We owe, it, we, we owe it to the taxpayers to track what this cost uh, overall. So we will be aware of what the cost is on your particular property, and each individual we're going to work with one-on-one. -on -one. We'll look at the county. We'll be looking at their insurance policy, look at the proceeds available. Um, but it, the effort will not be to fully recoup our costs. Well, I understand, but the way the form reads right now is I give you whatever my dollar limit is for debris removal, even if you spend half that amount on my property. That's what it says. No, are we, we, are we, we would going to track the actual cost of my property. Right. Uh, the question is, are we going to track actual costs, uh, especially if, in the case, our costs come in uh, below what you've got set aside? I will tell you, our experience generally is, it costs us more to clean your site than you have set aside in your insurance policy for debris. Given that, let, then let's let. I'll, I'll be happy to follow up with you when we corral in the back. Let me go to the gentleman in the back. Can we have a We just want to say oh, yeah. Just real quick on that policy, we're using, uh, it's called the ADMS system, Automated Debris Management System. The goal behind that is so that we can track very closely, it's not 100% accurate, but we're going to do our, our, our best effort to track exactly what's pulled from each property so that we'll have a, a price per property. So that when you go out to dinner and everybody throws money on the table, it's not split, you know, five different ways, even though you may have only got a salad and this guy over here got a T-bone. So we will try and track that as best we can per property.